Hello guys, Stamen.K2 here, and uh, we are back for the fifth installment of my comprehensive shipbuilding series. Today this one is uh, called With a Heart of Steel, and uh, we'll be going over the Citadel portion of uh, building a ship. So let's start off with the question, just what is a Citadel? Uh, this is usually the most heavily armored part of the ship, or the main belt part of the ship, where the uh, most vital systems are kept. Uh, what kind of systems more specifically uh, just bear in mind that I'll probably be giving all these their own individual videos here later on in the series uh, first we got main guns oh by the way these are in no particular order these are just uh, things that people will typically put in their main uh, citadel area so yeah we got the main guns uh, we got your control systems, AIs, PIDs, ACBs, and processing cards, uh, your power generation, which is fuel engines, steam engines, slash turbines, and batteries. Uh, then we have the fuel slash material storage that usually goes in there too. A lot of people also put in their ammo and uh, their lambs. And also, a lot of people try to put their secondary guns in this area as well. Again, uh, just a quick reminder, we will be probably going over all of those in uh, later videos. Essentially, the Citadel is where you're putting everything your ship needs to operate. This is also why it's the most heavily armored part of the ship. So now let's talk about armor. Uh, just a quick reminder, we discussed the armor blocks themselves back in the last part, Keelhold, where I discussed the materials. Uh, a good rule of thumb, though, is... Uh, if your armor is sufficient, is to test it by firing your main guns at it. If it's able to stop a round from your main battery, that means you're probably doing okay. Uh, it should also provide a means to stop hesh and heat. And uh, let's go ahead and start testing it against the mains. So here is a mock-up of our armor right here. Uh, starting from the left, you see that we have the alloy. Uh, that's going to be on the outside of the ship. Then we have an inner layer of metal. Then we have another layer of alloy. Then we have metal poles. We'll get to those later. And we have another layer of metal after that. And just so th we can monitor the damage, I put some uh, AI connectors back there. Uh, they'll only come off if any damage happens to get through the, uh, the first five layers. All right, so let's take a few test shots. Uh, behind me, I have the uh, gun that we're going to be testing with. And there she is in all her glory. So, first shot. Oh, a little too high. There we go. As you can see, it's doing a pretty good job at stopping the shells. They get to that uh, metal beam here in the back, and they just kind of... I am mean, not the metal... Well, yeah, metal beam here in the back, and they just stop. Just shy of hitting the AI connectors. Which I think is perfectly adequate for what we're wanting to do here. Uh, there is a chance that this would not work very well against something that uh, is using uh, armor-piercing, high-explosive anti-tank shells. Because then they would just come in here, detonate against this, and you'd be having a heat fragment spraying out of the back. So, just something to keep in mind with this. So we know that that's perfectly adequate to stop our own shells. Let's talk about uh, some other types of shells here. I have uh, two casemates here, one armed with hesh, one armed with heat. That is the purpose of this uh, pole setup here. This is what's called a spall liner. Now the reason why I went with poles on this is poles are a bit more space efficient than what I normally would use. 
Uh, what I would normally use would probably be something like wood, then an air gap, or yeah, wood, air gap, then uh, heavy armor. That'd probably be the best ball liner that you might be able to get your hands on. But this is perfectly adequate for our purposes here. So, let's go ahead and fire one of these off. I can't quite remember which one's which. So, let's have a quick look. I think this one was meant to be set up with the, uh, sh the uh, shape charge head. Which, just so you guys know, uh, shape charge also means the uh, heat, the high explosive anti-tank. So let's just take a few pot shots with this thing. Just random places on the wall over here. Now it's doing a bit of thump damage, but that's pretty much about all it's doing. But as you can see, the heat fragments are being completely stopped by the pole armor. Because when heat hits, it detonates against the surface. And then there's like a jet of superheated metal that's supposed to go straight through the armor. Until it hits an air gap. This makes the air gap. Now, I should mention that there is a small chance that the heat can get past... The, the pole armor, but it's probably so small it's rather negligible. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Alright, so now that we had a brief discussion of heat, let's talk about Hesh. Hesh, in a lot of ways, is similar to heat. Run direction. Oh, I'm firing them both. I just need the one. And as you can see, there are no components that are coming off the back of this. And again, it's because of the spall liner. Now, the way Hesh works is um, imagine hitting something with a hammer so hard that it blows at the backside. That's essentially how it works. The uh, sh the hesh or the uh, squash head comes in. It's going to detonate against the armor out here, and it's going to send a shock wave that goes through the armor to the air gap, which once again is made by the spall liner here. And all the uh, fragments that splinter at the back of this layer of armor here, it's going to get caught in here. Now, even if this spall liner is destroyed, we still have this layer here to provide a defense against the uh, hash uh, when it comes to the air gap. Now, typically with your guns, um, if they can't penetrate your armor, that's usually the uh, rule of thumb. You're probably doing all right. So, yeah, this is perfectly adequate for what we're wanting to do. All right, so I guess uh, next I'll show you guys how I go about building a citadel. All right, guys, so here we are back in the designer. And uh, we have our bow here once again. So what I would like to do now is we're going to install this armor here, or at least the, from this mock-up we got right here. And the way we're going to do that is with our friend the uh, prefab mode. I hope you'll pardon me, I still got a little bit of a cough going on. I'll do my best to try to mute that out. And there's our example there. So, let's put down our mirror mode and begin installation of our Belt armor. Now, something 
that I should probably mention for you guys that you probably need to keep in mind is these uh, four meter slopes, they're probably not going to be able to absorb as much damage as a full beam. So just something to be aware of when you're trying to armor things up. That means that the armor is going to be slightly weaker wherever there's going to be these four meter slopes. So just something to be aware of. And I'm wanting to bring this to where I could probably get a few engines here at the bow. That's the plan anyway. That looks like it's probably going to work pretty well going all the way out to there with it. So now we need to put in the barbettes. So we're going to take one that we uh, built like a video or two back. And we're going to grab a prefab of it and install it. And I believe that's 13 by 13. And I believe if I had done my maths correctly, this should fit like a glove. Can I move this any more further forward? Yeah, but I like one block. I think that will do. All right, and I believe the second barbette needs to be mounted about right here. There we go. And now we have our turret wells installed. So let's go ahead and mount the turrets. We're going to do that by using the subject mode. And we're going to want the smaller one first. And the best way to make sure that this is in the right position is to make sure that turret neck is completely clear of obstacles. And you might want to come down here just to make sure that there is nothing that could potentially get in the way of the turret. It's looking good so far, so we'll go ahead and pop that in. That's our first turret in. Now we got to put in the second one. There we go. Of course, this is going off the assumption that you guys understand how the sub-objects uh, work. Uh, if not, please uh, leave me a little something done in the comments, and uh, I'll do my best to try to explain it, or possibly do a video over it. So, yeah, just let me know. Here, yeah, we got a rather handsome looking bow here, all armored up. I believe we could fit us one pretty decent sized engine in here. Or two, or... Yeah. Okay, so I decided for your guys' benefit, I'm going to build an engine from scratch. It's a very reliable one, and hopefully you guys might learn a thing or two. So, I'm going to go here under fuel engines, we're going to put down that guy there and that guy up there and we're gonna bring a crankshaft all the way to about there now let's turn on mirror line is it on? kinda hard to tell Yep, it's definitely on.
This is weird. Okay, there it goes. So we're going to be going with a supercharged engine on this, I believe. I think I made it the exact length that it needs to be, so that's always good. Something weird's going on with my keyboard. Okay. Uh, I think I ran into an issue here. I'll see if I can fix it. I'll be right back. Okay, the issue was that I had the game pause. That's why these weren't rotating correctly. So, let's go ahead and get back to installing this engine. I skipped a spot. Yep. And I skipped a spot again. There we go. Uh, this is not high enough. There we go. Right mirror mode back on. So with this type of engine, you want to be able to maximize the amount of carburetors and the uh, superchargers. And that's what we're going to try to do with this guy. Okay, so let's start putting in carburetors. Second, I thought I was putting those in the wrong spot. There we go. All right, there we go. And let's put in some exhaust. We're going to want this to go to the cylinders and not the carburetors. It's going to be a nice big engine. And then, let's see here, we'll put in some superchargers.
go. Right, so now we got to run all the rest of the piping so that this thing will be able to breathe. This is actually kind of a... Um, a variant on an engine that I've been using very heavily for finest hour and it's it gets very good efficiency and it's fairly simple to make which a few of the reasons why I like it Don't mind that, it's just my cat's getting into a bit of a tussle. I don't even know if you guys are going to hear that, but yeah. <laughs> Alright, so here we're going to need... Looks like... Hmm... Yeah, we're going to need some more turbo, or I'm sorry, superchargers. And we're going to put them in like so. Did I miss one? Yes. I don't know if I can... Oh, maybe I can. Actually, yeah, I think I can. And I still got to do the piping for the top, but she is getting very close to being done. Oops, that's the wrong type. We want three ways so we can get that in there like so. Oops. And I'm probably going to root all the pipes down and out the bottom. And let's slap some radiators on here. Oh, 
I like these types of engines a lot because it's very difficult to get the same kind of efficiency out of similar engines. So that's why we're going with it. And it fits fairly nicely into a 5x5 five five space, which helps a lot you know, when you're trying to plan out uh, where you want things to go. Okay, that's all good there. Now for these spots here, these are usually a pretty good place to put uh, fuel. Not really much more it's going to be able to do. Yeah, this is going to be a pretty powerful engine, I think. Which, fine by me. And it fits very neatly in that area. Alright, so let's start routing this stuff down through the bottom. Now the reason why, actually a lot of people do this, but um, I'm going to tell you why I do this. And that's because, first off, uh, it helps a lot with efficiency if you have your um, exhaust ran straight out of the ship. And secondly, you want to go down with it like I am, because it uh, works a bit better against uh, IR-seeking uh, weapons. Because you're just blowing this down into the water, and yeah, it, it's just going to make it harder for IR sensors to pick up. It can make things a bit stealthy. Potentially. All right, that's not correct. Oh yeah, it was, okay. So we're gonna have to pull that bit out and we're gonna put one of these hole pipes in here. Now something that I've been heavily debating here is if I want a single bottom hole or if I want a double. We will probably answer that question later on in the build, but uh, yeah, it would make this thing a lot more resistant to torpedoes if uh, if we had it set up like that. Alright, so we got our engine installed. Let's have a look at its uh, power usage here. Probably don't want this more than 50%. Yeah, that's pretty good. You want to have it about 600 power per material, if not better. So that's about 15,000 power that this is going to generate for us. That's not bad. So let's uh, go ahead and cover this baby up.
There we go. Now I'm going to want to put some armor over the top of this. Not much. And also, I just realized that this has uh, two engine blocks. And we want this thing to have very low priority. Because the lower RPMs that this thing runs, the better. Oops, I had that one set wrong. Also, you might want to check to see if your engines are doing any battery charging. I t typically don't use batteries on a lot of things. So, let's see here. What do I want to do here? Uh, let's see. fuel engines, and we want radiators, and we're just going to do a fill command there. They're trying to squeeze a little more efficiency out of this. There. Now she's actually starting to look like a ship. How about that? All right, so let's go ahead and install some more of the armor belt here. Yeah, it seems like it's a lot of good room there. Now this might become longer or shorter just based on our needs. And uh, we'll talk about uh, adding some uh, lambs in the next video I think and we can just do a fill command like so Alright, so this seems pretty adequate for what I'm wanting to do here. Uh, I think that's going to give us a lot of room to put our AI lamps and whatnot. So here's what I'm going to do next. I've already grabbed the prefab of it, but I just want to show you where I got it from. But we're going to take a prefab of the front here. You see how that's lined up? And then we're going to basically just slap it here onto the back. We'll make sure that's all lined up. We're pull her out of the water with caps lock. And bam, there's the rear of the ship. 
So let's go ahead and add the turrets. There we go. Make sure that's all lined up. Gorgeous. And after installing all of that, she still floats. Uh, I should mention that I did put a water pump in the front. I'm sorry, not water pump, but air pump in the front. And look how much that rose up out of the water. Pretty good. All right. So that means we got our main guns installed. We have our citadel to work in here. We have our bow. We have our big set of engines here in the front and back. I guess I need to find out where we could put some ammo, but we could worry about that later. We're going to need pretty large amounts of it, I think. Yeah. Alright, well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up things here, so if you like what you've seen here today, please let me know with a like, comment, or even better, a subscription. You guys, have yourselves a hell of a day, and keep your armor high. Later.